Team Japan, meanwhile, after stumbling a little bit at the beginning, they've really regained their composure. What are you most excited for when you take a look at both of these teams as they get set for the finals here, Kels? I love that Japan has adapted so well. You know, we were talking about how in the beginning they kind of maybe slacked a little bit or just kind of maybe made the wrong decision sure. who to send out when. And now they're able to really pull themselves together, learn who has which character. And we're able to just kind of claim that matchup and really put out the right decisions in time. And EE, -E, we figure we might see a Light versus Zachary coming up here soon. Two of the heaviest hitters in this tournament. But it seems like if you have the best individual player, clearly that's going to be a huge advantage because that's one match that you can have in your favor already. No doubt about it. And I'll tell you what, neither one of those teams are going to be a, a scared to test who is that player. So if you see that light Zachary match, that's something I'm personally going to be excited for to see that, that one kind of develops. But overall, man, you, you switch things to best of five. It's such a long road. you got to kind of plan where you want to piece together and put your best out. Maybe that's not necessarily going to be at the start this time. And it's interesting because that's a very good point you bring up. If you have the feeling that they have a very strong individual player, then you might not necessarily want to put your player up against their best one. You feel like, listen, we probably can't beat Zach Gray, so maybe we save our two strongest fighters for their two of their weaker fighters. And it looks like we aren't going to see a Zach Gray in light battle at this point. Well, I can't say I'm I can't say I'm too surprised about that. As I said, you know, it would have been it's one of those things that maybe we're kind of, you know, salivating for, but it's not necessarily the best for the team. Again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Best of five. You've got to plan this out accordingly. And I think that's what we're going to see. We are here at the grand finals. I'm excited, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. Zach Gray taking on Sir John, our first matchup of the grand finals here. And Zach Gray coming in with Joker and Palatina. So you take a look at both these fighters, and this is an interesting matchup that we have here, Kells. One's a grappler that's going to be pretty mobile in Sir John's Palatinas, and Joker that we know is all about applying that constant pressure. It really is a very strange matchup where we're seeing both characters really like to kind of maintain pressure, but at the same time not over committing first. So it's really about who's going to commit first and make that mistake so that the other one can take advantage over. And we're seeing Zachary that had the hard start, but that bit of my Mini Mushroom is going to change things up and give the big advantage to Zachary. Sir John off the ledge right now. Zachary trying to make sure that he does some ledge trapping. No luck right there, but Sir John just can't quite get back in the land and get comfortable here. This is what we see, EE. E. Zachary does such a good job of making you feel uncomfortable. You can never rest, never relax against them. When you're going up against somebody who can just be so disruptive on top of having one of the best offenses in the game, it is very difficult to deal with Incompat. Not to mention right now, Joker being backed up by Arson, and you already know one good strong meaty hit is going to be enough to seal away this stock of Sir John, but credit him for being unrelenting and not giving it up just yet. Sir John able to stay alive through that, as you mentioned. You just have to survive through this arson stage right now, but Zach, oh, right. oh. fantastic finish right there, E. Where are you heading, my man? That is the question. Certainly not back to the stage, so now you're forcing out the Lucina, and for Zach Ray, this is one of the scariest things about this guy. He gets an advantage, and even at those percents where he can say are a little fragile, he still finds a way to push that advantage, rack up that percent. We already see 29% on Sir John, make it 35. And that's the point right there, Kel, you're able to rack up so much damage at 105, so you put yourself in a better state when your next character comes on. And of course, this smash ball, neither one of them really going out of their way to grab it right now. It's definitely just the idea oh. Priority! What are you going to prioritize? They're definitely not your life, let me tell you right now. Zach Ray able to get the off ledge KO and connect with the Smash Ball. We are seeing a masterpiece right now, Kells. Definitely for sure. Zach Ray showing why he is one of the best in the business. Is this going to be a three stop? Because it's looking like this, especially with our set now, this could be it. Let's go to Congo Jungle right here. The crowd is chanting three stock. They want to see it. Let's see if Sir John can apply a little bit more of a fight at the end of this one. Zero Suit Sam is having to deal with Arson as well, too. Zachary trying to get the goodies out of the crate, but Zachary once again dominating the middle of this stage. Sir John is trying to get back on. And EE, -E, no luck because Zachary's all over. Oh, that'll do it. Three stock for Zachary. High fives left and right. And that is why he's one of the world's best. I mean, what are you going to do about that, man? He invited the whole cook out. You had the band of thieves, you had all <laughs> any item you can imagine. Everybody showing up for Zach Ray, and that three stock well deserved in a dominant way for Team Japan to kick off grand finals. And Kells, there's a lot of emotion with that, but at the end of the day, it's one game. And it's a best of five here for the most part. And what's interesting is if I'm Team Europe, 
you didn't send light out against Zach Gray. You sent Sir John, and you know that light is typically your heavy hitter, so a bit of gamemanship right there by Team Europe. For sure. Maybe they're just trying to see what is Zach Gray actually able to do, you know, with Joker especially. We haven't seen so much of his Joker. Sure. We've seen the Pokemon trainer in doubles, and we've never seen a Pokemon trainer before that. We've seen his Wario and Wolf, and now we just saw the Joker. So I feel like... Uh, definitely we're seeing some adaptation coming in of who to send. Europe really wants to be careful of who to save who for which character and for which matchup for sure. Japan taking the first game in this grand finals here and so now it's 1-0, best of seven as we said here before and you take a look at how Team Europe's gonna really recalibrate here at EE. You still have light with the matchup here pretty soon but what we're seeing from Japan is they're getting stronger and stronger with each round. You have somebody like Zachary leading the charge. It's just a great feeling. I'm telling you guys, it's all about the start. And when Zachary just comes out and just puts on these unbelievable performances, that's what you expect from somebody who's arguably top five in the world of the competitive scene as well, too. So you come to an environment like this, obviously a few little wrinkles in the, in the game plan. You can argue with the items and stuff like that, but it's all about how the squad in general can connect. And for Zach Ray, I mean, he's just telling his guys like, look, if I can do it, why can't you? Well, it's interesting. We continue to chat with the players all week long. And what they like about items is that it really makes it viable for any character. We've seen such a Definitely. plethora of characters. And one of the quotes that stood out to me is Sir John was even saying, listen, in the previous Super Smash Brothers iteration, you really had to prepare for about 20 or 25 characters in the competitive scene. In this one, you have to prepare for about 50 because there's such wonderful character balance. Definitely, for sure. I was actually talking about this with my brother the other day, that any character is viable. Literally, I, don't, I never even look at that tier list. I don't know what's, who's good, who isn't. I, don't know. I honestly believe any character, if you put the time and work into it, it might take a little bit longer for other characters to show up, but they're gonna show up and they're gonna show up big. A lot of strategy and discussion amongst these teams as they get set for the next match here. And if you're Team Europe, to that point you made EE -E about a good start. It's one thing when you're going into a match and it's 0-0, zero, zero, but when it's, your team's down 0-1, it puts just a little bit extra pressure on you on this stage, and let's get set for our next squad strike here. EE, e, Akasa versus Light. Here comes the heavy hitter for Team Europe. Your thoughts on the characters that we see selected? I think Akasa has proven that he can, that, like, he's not just an all team. This guy can definitely come on the stage and put on a ton of pressure. Obviously, Cloud, one of those characters, you don't get an opportunity to see as much. I personally think Cloud is still one of the best, just not properly utilized at all times. And for, as you mentioned, Jordan, as long as he can stay on the stage, he has a pretty good chance here against the Lucina. Well, that's why stage control is so important for Cloud and Kells. You know that Cloud's got so, so much space and room with his hitbox especially with that Buster Sword, that he's got some safe approaches in those very powerful special attacks. Yes, definitely. Cloud with that range, especially, and how fast it comes out, makes it hard for Lucina to get in and overcommit like she usually does for it to be safe. But now she actually has to wait and see what Cloud is going to do. And doing such a good job at it right now. Light playing unbelievable. Light doing a nice job using some of those tilt attacks to keep Cloud out of that sword bubble, as we mentioned. Stay in the middle of the stage and use that range on your sword and your quickness as well, too, and follow up on any whips. But Cloud has a chance for the smash bomb, and as we know, this can turn things around. Light, however, trying to apply some pressure. Oh, that is a big air ball by Akasa. However, Akasa is still with the advantage. We know that Cloud can get a KO. It doesn't take much. All you gotta do is just connect here at EE. Well, that Omni Slash would have been tremendous if he was able to connect it, but no, just able to kind of snip off the bangs a little bit, not getting the full body, which you'd like to see, but you're seeing Oxa still with the pressure applied, and that is a clean floor until to secure that first stop. And interestingly enough, Akasa not charging the limit the full way until Palatina comes in. That super spicy curry is gonna do a great job of disrupting any possible combos here. Cloud able to connect with a couple of hits on that limit, but not enough, but using those special attacks paired with that super spicy curry, curry Kells. Definitely looking like Smash Brothers here. You don't know what's happening, but smashes are going left and right when it comes to that curry. I feel like anything can happen in that mashup, but Akasa heating up quite quickly, getting that stage control. Luckily for Light, though, is able to reflect that bomb just in time before losing another Light. And this is big if you're Light. you got to hang in here with Palatina and try to take out Cloud. But no, Cloud wants to flirt with a three stop here. The crowd wants it here. Here comes Light with Sheik at this point. Cloud's just doing a fabulous job of handling anything that Light's throwing out, EE. I mean, the thing about this is you have the alternate for Team Japan just absolutely taking it to the best team, uh, best person on Team Europe. I mean, it's not even a contest right now in this Sheik. I mean, we were talking about the last time we saw a lot of combos being distributed, but right now, just trying to find her footing and praying to avoid another three-stop 
which is really maybe the thing that set Team Japan so far ahead. And Kells, a clinic being put on by Akasa and his cloud doing a great job of controlling the stage, not having to fall off and get onto the ledge too often. Here comes she going with this match. Oh, oh, no. Another three stop. Buy one, get one free. E -E. Team oh, Japan. Unbelievable. Taking a 2-0 lead in dominant fashion. Back to back three stocks, Kells. Japan wants this, and you can tell that they want it more than Europe right now. Europe's gonna have to turn it up if they want to show that they even have the slightest chance of even making it to the championship at the moment. If they want those trophies, they gotta they gotta turn it up. Kudo. Because they're, they're not playing Robin right now. They're, they're watching. Coming up right now, and you look at the momentum in this crowd and the energy in this theater. They are hungry for a championship. Team Japan on a mission right now, E. I told you, this venue, this historic venue here is just perfect because history is going to be made in Japan, trying to do it in a very dominant fashion. I know they say Japan landed a rising sun, but those stocks are falling, <laughs> my man. It is not even close thus far. Well, Japan is looking for the sweep of both the Splatoon 2 World Championship as well as the Super Smash Brothers Championship. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do. But if Team Europe wants to get this win, they're going to etch this into the scrolls of history because they're down 2-0 kills. They got to come back 3-0 and it only happens one match at a time. Well, now they have to look at it like this. Europe has to stay calm and realize, okay, you know, they just had two of their big heavy hitters that came out. Let's see what the third one's got. Are they all like this? We don't know, but you can't think, man, oh, we're going to get bamboozled. No, we need to actually stick <laughs> into this and really show that, hey, we got one player left. Let's see what you can do against them. It's a brand new game. It's one game at a time, one character at a time. And that's all it takes for a slight bit of different confidence to bring this back. But the challenge here, of course, is the fact that if we do go past this game here and we go to yet another one, you have got Zachary waiting in the realms for Team Japan. And so you know that he's going to have another chance. He's been clearly one of the most dominant players here at EE. So if you're Team Japan, your approach here is you're up 2-0. Obviously, this is a team that's been very focused, very locked in this last couple of matches. I, I, you know what? It really comes down to the point. If you're able to get, even if things go awry in this third game, if you're able to get Zachary back out there, it, you're almost ready to, to almost rename this team the Team GG. You know what I mean? That, <laughs> that's about as good of a game as it's going to get. He already displayed what he can do in that opening. But I've never wanted to count anybody out. We know this European team is full of surprises, and they're also full of talent. But right now, the juice is with Japan. It really is. Let's put this into perspective. Team Europe has yet to take a stock in Grand Finals. That's how dominant Team Japan has been. I didn't Look want to at Casa <laughs> <laughs> and Zach Gray, and now it's up to Kudo to really carry things here moving forward. Let's take a look at the loadouts here. And Kells, your thoughts as Robin GG, the last hope for Team Europe taking on Kudo. I think this is a great pick using Peach and Daisy, of course, his strongest picks, and the Palutena on the side. Definitely a great character to really push out someone like Pitt. But against Peach and Daisy, we'll have a hard time to even get a footing on the stage. It's Kuro going for it! Ooh, Kuro is that. not messing around. Team Japan, they ain't messing around, EE. -E. How about that? Not even 30 seconds into the match, Kuro already taking a stop. Not 30 seconds, not 30%, not point, not point three. It was an absolute massacre on that first stock. And I'll tell you what, if I'm the European squad, I'm starting to wonder, are there participation trophies for second place? Robin GG, though, great use of the combo and the blue shell. And Robin GG, if you can take this stock, basically even things out at this point. But you see Kuro so aggressive with Pit, able to follow up a lot of those aerials with that Palatina bow as well, too. I feel like Robin GG is definitely turning it up a little bit. He's definitely adapting a lot better. He's calming. He's getting the edge guard that he needs and that damage. And while not even taking as much damage, of this spacing will definitely cost him an edge guard here. And now it's all about Robin GG trying to get back into the neutral. Does a fine job of getting back in the middle of the stage. Great job with the shield as well, too. But now the smash ball comes on the stage. Oh, Robin GG. That is huge because now you have the healing of the smash ball that we're going to see here if Daisy decides to use it. You wonder how long you're going to wait here. Daisy not wasting any time whatsoever. Most likely going to go for that recovery here. Oh, once again, a slap here with the frying pan. <laughs> see just how effective those smash balls can be. I mean, and that you couldn't have scripted it any better if you're Robin GG. You needed a big time plan. You can argue what these guys, the character specialist on the squad right there, the item is really coming into play. Doing a nice job of balancing this match back up, but now Kudo doing a great 
job of keeping Robin GG off the ledge. Kuro using that aggression and the aerial mobility and everything that Zero Suit Samus can do to apply that pressure in the air here, Kells. Even with that, though, Robin staying super calm about this, almost getting the full hit into that early KO. But I really love the way that Robin has been adapting and being super patient, avoiding himself, just being defensive, and really waiting up, almost losing that oh. stop, though. He's got to land. Robin GG so floaty, has to try and fall. As you said, Beam Sword coming, so a little bit more range for Daisy right now. If Daisy can stay alive for one more oh. match bump. Here we go, Robin GG got the one stock advantage. Now you're just trying to rack up some percentage against Dark Pit. Nice little 15 taken off the chunk of the cake right there. Oh, able to catch on the whip right here. Robin GG applying some nice air combos here. And now this turn up providing some spacing air. EE, -E, what do you think you gotta do if you're Robin to maintain this advantage? I mean, you've already made it clear. This is European team. We are not going quietly into the night. You just gotta keep your composure and keep on the pressure. That has been the main thing that has allowed Robin to get back into it. Yes, of course, you credit the fact that, that Smash Bros. was very timely, but what you have made out of it has been the difference to maybe send this to a game four. Palatina taking on Dark Pit. There's a lot of poetic justice in that right there. Makuro at 68%. Have to try and get a victory for Japan. Just oh. one win away from the championship. And Robin GG wants to keep the fun going. Two Smash Bombs on this stage. Kuro able to get the Smash Bomb. Now just needs to find some space in order to deploy it. Robin GG applying that pressure gets that critical grapple that we like to see here, Kells. Definitely, for sure. Robin GG showing that she is his goddess. Give me that Smash Bomb. Let me show you what your goal has cost you the entire year. And it catches Kuro. GG said, no, nah, fam, it ain't over yet. They staying alive here at EE. It was certainly time to bow down when she steps in the ring, the black hole taking care of business. And that's exactly what you expect, the no quit attitude from this team. You can say who's the favorites, who's not, but what do you have when you show or step up on that stage and show it? Well, I'll tell you what, Robin had no quit, and it resulted in a W. We have yet another substitution taking place for Team Japan. Their final substitution, Konbu, is coming in for Akasa. So that is their last switch that they can make. Konbu, we know, is very good with the items as well. But Kells, going back to that last match, yes, smash balls are important, but the smash attack that you have is critical. And the fact that Daisy has one that can apply damage but also provide healing was what turned things around for Robin GG. Definitely agree. You had that option of, okay, he's asleep. Do I hit him? Do I heal? Or do I do both? And he decided to do both. He literally knocked him out upwards, was able to give enough time for Robin to really just go away, get healing, while Japan had to plan. So it was a really, really good idea from him to really bring that back. And I think from that point on, it gave him the confidence that he needed to really take that game. They're definitely very uh, clean. I'm excited to see what Kombu is going to be doing. Roy, Krom, me, Brawler. We have not seen that. Well, now the decision as far as who's going to fight is a huge one here, EE, e., because do you go with your heavy hitter right now to try and extend things, or do you try to save your heavy hitter for last, knowing that if this comes down to a decisive game five, we have our cleanup batter in the lineup in the plate? I think you just, you assure that you get to the final game. That is honestly what it needs to come down. You, you assure you get to that final person. And then at the end of the day, it's just like whoever's up next, you just gotta step up. The next man up mentality. You just have to perform when the lights are on. I mean, lights, camera, all these guys clearly about that action. And we're gonna have the good makings of a fourth game. And Kells, that's a very good point that we have from EE. Because of the items, there is that opportunity for a match to turn right around depending on what drops. And there is the hardware that these teams are trying to take home. Team Japan, one victory away from that, Team Europe trying to extend this. I know all of us here would love to see a game five in these grand finals, yes, but sir. you gotta go one at a time. Let's see what decision Team Europe will go with here. And as we mentioned, Kombu, the substitution for Team Japan. Why do you think they're making that switch for Akasa after Akasa was so great getting that three stock earlier on? Yeah, definitely, for sure. I mean, he might need a break. Maybe just the <laughs> switch. You know, I, I doubt it, but you know, even the switch, Kombu, Roy, Krom, me brawler, me brawler, that character definitely slept on a lot. Not a lot of people know how to fight that character very well. Krom, a force to be reckoned with. And Roy, just as much as a force, very good at being aggressive, really being in your face. We've been seeing a lot of struggle coming in uh, when Europe has been fighting Roy. So I think this is that specific case where we want Roy on that field. Still trying to figure out who Team Europe will be sending out there for game four. Obviously, it's a big time decision. You see Kombu and Zachary highlighted for Team Japan, so you figure those are the two fighters for a potential game five if this does go to that. But they got to get game four. And 
yes, even though you didn't take a stock in the first two matches here, you have to realize that anything can happen here at EE. And what's great is Robin GG gave you yet another breath of life. I mean, and, and you know, good thing is too, like despite how those first two games go, you get an opportunity to kind of reflect on it and how to prevent that from being the case yet again. And honestly, it's all about, again, I harp back to this point a lot, but composure is just such a big deal, especially you're in the grand finals like this. You're gonna take your time from deciding. And again, personally for me, I send out my heavy hitter just to assure it goes to the five, fifth game, but maybe they still know something I don't. Sir John taking on Cole Bowen. This is an interesting decision here. Seems like both teams are saving their potential heavy hitters for last. Yep. Sir John, as we know, so good with that Palatina, but as you mentioned, that Roy can create so many issues for Team Europe. They've struggled so much with the sword character. I feel like this is an advantage for Europe, actually. Roy versus Palutena. Palutena, a good character to be defensive and really bait out these aggressive options. And Roy, a character who's always aggressive, so I feel like this can be a huge advantage for Sir John, but on the, on the disadvantage side is that if you're in Pelotena's face, she doesn't like that very much. Oh, Kolbu doing a great job of snapping onto the ledge there for the invulnerability. EE would have had to deal with a smash right in the face. Right now, both players pretty equal right now. Seems like Palatina and Sir John has found their footing, but Kolbu doing a great job of keeping her off the stage at this point. And now you see that daybreak piece coming down and keep that in mind because it's one of those items that oh. you just run. Oh! That'll, when you talk about daybreak, that'll break your spirit. That Ooh. SD just out of nowhere, and that is tremendous. And really for combo, I'm just thinking, okay, I only have two stocks to take care of business. No problem. But can he do it, man? That's the question. Can Sir John, right still flawless in this stock, doing a great job to Lucina of just keeping Roy out of range. And how about the recovery by Sir John Kelly? Gonna get a chance, but no. That's Swordsman what's... getting the smash ball here. That footstool into getting that smash ball was beautiful. Me brother coming in like, what's that? Let me show you what I got real quick. Well, here's here it is. Oh, wonderful timing on the smash ball. Is it going to be enough? No, Lucina able to stay alive. So nothing too devastating there at that point. Sir John going to try and outrange Kobu. Just a little bit more length on that sword for Lucina. The both fighters, as you know here, are going to look for that opportunity to counter, Kells. Yes, for sure. And I was expecting to see the Mii Brawler, as I said before, but we're with the Sword Fighter. The Sword Fighter is definitely really great on long stages to really push the opponent away from you. Definitely. Really great at keeping spacing, keeping control of the edges rather than the center of the stage. That's something very, very unique about the Mii uh, Sword Fighter. Sir John and Kombu going back to back on the second stock. Don't forget Kombu with the victory. Team Japan is your grand champion. Sir John and Team Europe trying to force a game five. Oh, how about that up B right there, E? Well, I mean, that right there, literally the winds of change. And then off of that, able to find the daybreak as well. So some hefty amounts of protect on sure to follow Sir John getting knighted in the worst way. Connects with the daybreak, and that might do it for Kombu. Sir John with zero suit Sam is going to have to really dig deep and play a very clean, precise game here because you're now down 2 1 in the stocks. And what do we continue to see from Kombu in this sword fighter, Kells? Definitely this control, this constant pressure. Oh, oh, no way! And sword fighter for Japan wins it. And Team Woo! Japan, your grand champions of the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate World Championship 2019 3v3. Stage. Lots of credit, though, to Team Europe and their way to battle back. Obviously, just a few plays here and there, but that smash ball always turning the tide of a match. And then that daybreak kills that Japan was able to snag there at the end. That really seemed to seal the deal. Definitely, for sure. Again, we were talking about how the Mii's, no, not too many people are very familiar with them. And the minute that sword fighter spawned, it was just unfamiliar territory for Team Europe. I feel like he really came out, was able to clean that stage with that tornado and guarantee a beautiful trophy for Team Japan. Look at these guys, how happy they are, man. Team Japan making some wise substitutions as well, too. Kombone coming in for Akasa, able to seal the deal and get the victory for Japan. And EE, how about Japan? Hit a couple hurdles early on, but man, 
they got so much better as this tournament went on. Look, first couple matches caught some L's, and then they bounced back, all right? The big, strong, strong mentality, and that's exactly what you expect from somebody like Zach Ray leading this group of individuals, all of them just so talented, not steering away from using their substitutions as well, just kind of sharing the sugar, and everybody well-deserving of those trophies on stage. Well, Kells and EE, we've had a fantastic crowd this entire day of exciting Nintendo competitive action, but out here, to present a special award for our champions, Team Japan. Everybody, please make some noise. The president of Nintendo of America, Doug hey. Bowser. Congratulations. 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 How's everybody doing? Congratulations to the winners of the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate 2019 World Championships. Congratulations, Japan. I'd also like to take a minute to congratulate all four teams that were up here on stage with us. The winners of the North American Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Open, the European Smash Ball Team Cup, the Australian Open, and the Super Smash Brothers Japan Championships. And many thanks, yeah, please, give it up for those guys. And, and I'd like to extend a thank you to the thousands and thousands of people that participated around the world. For us at Nintendo, seeing the response from the players and from the fans has just been truly thrilling. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, we have one final congratulations from someone that I don't think this community needs an introduction to. Let's take a look. Hey, everyone. 大乱闘スマッシュブラザーズディレクター空の桜井正弘ですお久しぶりです日本優勝おめでとうございますこの会場は、えー、とその日本の代表が選抜された、えー、決勝戦の場で、えー、行われていますスマッシュボールが出てますね綺麗ですね大変多くの激闘がありました、えー、その中で今優勝に立っている人たちというのはものすごく多くの世界の敗者たちの上に立っているわけでそれはとてもすごいことかと思っています自分としては作った自分としてはちょっと申し訳なさを感じるところもあるんですけどね、えー、すごく多くの時間を費やし、えー、たくさん人が戦っていくというだけど人が競う様というのは本当に面白いなとまたこのゲームいろんなことが起こって本当に面白いなと思う次第です私はいま、えー、だにダウンロードコンテンツの新ファイターを作っているのですがその新ファイターの情報については E3 のダイレクトで改めて、えー、公開しようと思いますのでぜひこちらもご期待くださいあスマッシュボームになっちゃいましたねそれでは皆さんごきげんよう I think many of you are going to want to tune in next week to see what or who he may be talking about. I've got one more thing. For so many of you in North America, you've been enjoying the competition and the participation and the viewing. For you, the competition will continue. I'm happy to announce the Super Smash Brothers Open, or online open, starting in June 2019. The, the four winners will receive travel, accommodations, and registrations to EVO 2019 in Las Vegas, where you'll be playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now look for details on Twitter at, at NintendoVS and at events.nintendo.com, and registration will be open later on today. So on behalf of Nintendo, Thank you so very much for being here with us today. And please be sure to tune in to the Nintendo Direct E3 2019 this Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, and then throughout E3 to Treehouse Live, where we'll have more news, developer presentations, and some first-time gameplay looks. Thank you very much, everybody. Congratulations.
Give it up one more time for president of Nintendo of America, Doug Bowser. Well, that will conclude a very exciting day of Nintendo competitive action. We had the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational 2019, the Splatoon 2 World Championship 2019, Team Japan winning that one, then of course the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate World Championship 2019 3v3 where Team Japan completed the sweep for today. Big thank you to all of our wonderful casters, Kells, EE, e. Vish, Milana, Ashley, Nine, and of course, big thank you to our wonderful crew for all of their hard work behind the scenes to help put on an absolutely first class broadcast. But last but not least, you the fans. Thank you, all of you, for tuning in. Your love, your support, you make this what it is. So we appreciate all of you being here and watching. And until next time, from all of us here, enjoy the games, enjoy the competition, and most importantly, enjoy the fun.